the thought uh, of hearing. You know, a lot of people don't. Uh, we was teaching there, I think, two weeks, three weeks, and uh, about that, and we got it from the Bible lesson of faith, because faith comes by hearing. And but I've got a little bit more left on that. I'd like to bring out this morning, if I could. Amen. And we'll try, if it's God's will, to move on to another subject. But you know, hearing is very important. We've established that in the in the last two to three weeks that we've taught on that. Uh, hearing is very important. A lot of people might say, and I'll repeat myself a few times maybe this morning, a lot of people say, well, I hear, I'm hearing. No, there's two ways of hearing. There's hearing, and then there's hearing. When you just hear, amen, you hear, and everything's cool, and that's fine. But when you really hear the Word of God, it changes your life. It changes your, your thoughts, your mind. It, everything changes when you really hear the Word. There's a lot of people hearing scriptures, but it's not doing too much for them, church. How many would agree? It's not doing a whole lot for them. In the book, uh, let's turn this morning. <clears throat> I'm not sure. Uh, we may get to finish it, and, and then we may not, but uh, we'll go as far as we can. Amen. Mark. I think we left off. I may have brought a couple after this, but I think I left off here in Mark. Uh, around the fourth chapter and the 24th verse, it said, uh, Watch or take heed what you hear. For well, what measure you meet, it shall be measured to you. And, are you. and unto you that hear shall more be given. We mentioned that the last time. Uh, but still, church, a lot of people are just not hearing. Now, he said, Take heed what you hear. And I touched on it a little bit in the last Bible lesson. A lot of people today are just listening to too much, I call it junk. They listen to too many things. You, you got to watch who you listen to. You got to watch even what preacher you listen to. There's a lot of preachers out there preaching things that sound, man, they can, uh, if you didn't know better and didn't have the Holy Ghost, you'd think that was the anointing of God. Amen? And a real preacher get up and preach some things led and by God, and you wouldn't feel that. <laughs> There's some preachers out there that can make you think they got the anointing of God on them. Church, I need to real. It's like everything else, there is a false. Amen. There's a false repentance. People just come down for show. There's a false baptism. It's, uh, they bap they're being baptized, but they're not really repented. And then when they're baptized, they're not even uh, baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. So there's all kinds of false, false sanity, if we can use that word, out there in the world. Well, there's the false hearing. And people today just sit around with their eyes open, but uh, it's like the old saying is, there's nobody home. Amen. But I hope that you'll get to the place where you can hear the Word of God. Take heed, he said, what you hear. How, how many of you ever watched or took note of, or even thought, maybe I put that away, thought about, what are you listening to? So you might say, well, I've, I've listened to this message, that message, or I've read. That's good. But if after that you turn on something that they're preaching garbage, so you can't put them both in the same, one of them's going to be over the other one. Can you, can you, how many can hear me? So you can't hear good and then turn that off to put on some bad. Some people today, are just, they're not judging what's good and what's bad, I don't think. They're just listening. Well, I know the truth. He can't sway me, and they don't even have enough understanding to know they've already been swayed. That's right. Because the more you hear, what goes in is what comes out. Amen. In the book of uh, Mark chapter 9, Mark 9, we're going to open up there. Amen. Mark chapter 9. Now we find, church, again, it's all going to be around or centered around hearing and what people hear. And we find that uh, Mark here, amen, he says in verse, we're going to start in verse uh, 2. After six days, Jesus takes with him Peter and John and James and leadeth them up to a high mountain apart by themselves. And he was transfigured before them. Now that would have been a sight to see, wouldn't it? <laughs> Can you imagine? How many of you ever thought about that? I have. I've tried to imagine, man, what that would have been like. 
what did they actually see? Well, of course, they give us a little bit of hint here. Oh, man, he just kind of, he kind of got lighter and lighter and brighter and Amen. And then they hear his voice. But now listen to what it says. After six days, Jesus taketh with him Peter, James, and John. These three main characters, I'll call them. And leadeth them up into a high mountain apart from themselves. And he was transfigured before them. And his raiment became shining exceedingly, white as snow, so as no fuller on earth could white them. I guess from what I can read here, what they saw was so white, they had never seen anything as white. Amen. And there appeared unto them Elias and Moses, and they were talking with Jesus. My God, church, can, it, can you imagine that? If God can do such things as that, what could God do, to, to do to, today for you and I if we needed something, if we wanted a, uh, something from him, we're trusting him for it? Amen. And there appeared unto them Elias and Moses, and they were talking with him, with Jesus. And Peter answered and said to Jesus, Master, he said, It is good for us to be here, and uh, let us make three tabernacles, one for thee, one for Moses, and one for Elias. Now, no doubt, you know, they kind of think, well, they were, the Bible says they didn't know what to do. They didn't know what they were talking about, really, or what they were saying. But Peter answered and said, and Jesus, he said, Master, is it good for us to be here? He couldn't, to my mind, think of nothing else to say. Well, let's make three tabernacles. Amen. Well, God didn't want three tabernacles made. Amen. I'm getting to what he did tell them to do. And he, he wants not what to say, for they were sore afraid. And there was a cloud that overshadowed them. And a voice came out of the cloud saying, This is my beloved son. Hear him. Your Bible say that? Hear him. See, uh, we find, church, that all of a sudden when he was transfigured before them and the brightness began to get whiter and whiter and there appeared to them these three men from the Old Testament, amen, and they're talking to the Lord. Well, Peter, man, that thing throws him for a loop like no doubt it would anyway. <coughs> and the only thing he could think of, like I said, is building a tabernacle, but no. What did the Lord say? Huh? Hear Hear him. Hear the Lord. Amen. People today think, uh, well, they think all kinds of things, but <laughs> there was, let me read this again. There was a cloud that overshadowed him, and a voice came out of the cloud saying, This is my beloved son. Hear him. Hear him. What would you do if you seen something like that? What would be going on in your mind? I think the Lord was trying to get the, you know, everything God does is for a reason, for a purpose. And you wonder if God wanted to talk to these three men. He didn't need Peter, James, and John to do that. But he took them with him anyhow, didn't he? And let all this happen in front of them. So there had to be a reason that God did it that way. But I think he wanted to make a point, church. He wanted to let them know, and he wanted to let Peter know, amen, hear ye him, hear the Lord. I don't care who you hear from. I don't care what you see. I don't care what, what kind of a dream you have. What Jesus Christ says goes. If it goes against him, you, you have to throw it away. <laughs> amen. And, and there's a lot of other things that he could have meant to, but well, I think the main thing is here, he wanted to point out and specify Right here is the one you hear. Amen. This is all great. This is a, a miracle. I'm, I'm, this is miraculous. But hear you him. Amen. How many is really hearing him today? They're hearing all kinds of voices. They're hearing all kinds of people. And I seem like I can't hear lately. I can't get over how it keeps coming to my mind just about every service. People, they're ministers today. I guess the best way to put it, church, you know, hearing is good, but hearing the wrong things is bad. Now here we're finding, we're, we're finding where he says, hear ye him. A lot of preachers today, church, they're hearing everything but God. They're hearing too many things. They'll put this tape in, we say tape, CD, whatever it is anymore. Amen, they're all going out of style too. But... They, they listen to this preacher, listen to that preacher, listen to this radio broadcast, that radio broadcast, 
amen, this preacher, that preacher, and they're putting all this in their head. It's no wonder they're so mixed up. It's no, it's no wonder when they get up to preach, amen, or try to do something for the Lord, amen, all this junk comes to their mind. Amen. God said, hear ye him. We ought to be concerned with that Bible right there. Most of, and I'm talking about God's ministers now. God's ministers ought to be reading that more and listening to that more and listening to other God's, other, uh, God's ministers more than they are all this out there in the world. But you know what they're doing? This is a Bible study. You know what they're doing? They're trying their best to find something new, something to excite the people, something to make them look like they know something somebody else don't. Instead of just sticking with God's Word. God's Word has everything you and I need. Amen. My, my, my. In uh, Mark 12, verse 28. 12 and verse 28. One of the scribes came, and having heard them reasoning together, Perceiving that he had answered them well, ask him, which is the first commandment of all? You know, there was always somebody out there trying to catch him in something. Trying to prove him wrong. Trying to, uh, amen, they, they, they were sneaky. They were underhanded. They were trying to privately do things they shouldn't be doing. Have you ever heard of that? Church, uh, my, my. one of the scribes, and them scribes were one of the worst in the world. See, the scribes, I mean, that's what a scribe is, kind of like a lawyer, but he was a scribe in the scriptures. But these scribes, if you learn a little bit about them, they, they had a real high opinion of themselves. So they had a name that, you know, people look at them like they knew something. But I'm not serious. And the scribes came and having uh, heard them reasoning together and perceiving that he had answered them well, asked him, which is the first commandment of all? And Jesus answered him, the first of all the commandments. And most of you know this, I know. The first of all the commandments is hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord. And thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, and with all thy mind, and with all thy strength. This is the first commandment. Now listen. And the second is like, namely this, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. There is none other commandment greater than these. And when the scribe heard him, well, master, thou hast said the truth, for there is one God, and there is none of now. He knew that much, didn't he? Of course, most of the Jews do. <laughs> uh, they just don't know the whole truth. Amen. And, and he, he goes on and to love him with all the with all the heart and with all the understanding, with all the soul, and with all the strength. And to love his neighbor as himself is more than all whole burnt offerings and sacrifices. And when Jesus saw that he answered discreetly, he said unto them. Thou art not far from the kingdom of God, and no man after, uh, after doeth ask him any questions. See, you kind of, you know, it, when you look at the way you talk to another, a lot of people, how many, now most of you know that all scriptures rest on those two. Now, how can you love, now people say, I want to hear the word. I want to, I want to love God. I want to be right with God. But now the Bible just told us that on these two scriptures rest everything. So what was those two? Well, the one was the hero of the Lord of God is one and all that. The other is to love thy brethren as thyself. Did you catch that? Brother, what do you mean? We, we know that. You be, but if you love, the point I'm trying to make, if you love your brethren as yourself, you won't be talking about them. And you won't be working against them. Come on. You won't be going around behind their back. Amen. Amen. The whole, all the scriptures rest on those two. So we find these people out here doing all these things, but then say, but well, then the Bible says, if you love me, 
keep my commandments. They're breaking God's commandments and don't even realize they're breaking them. That's why, church, it's important for you and I to hear the Word of God and hear it all. And not just hear it with these ears, but hear it with, their, with your heart. Hear it to where you can understand it and you uh, receive it. That way, tomorrow, next week, uh, a month from now, amen, they won't be slipping away so easily because you got it in here. People today just don't have it in here. That's why they're so easy. They can do things uh, like they're doing today and not even feel guilty about it. Don't even feel like they were doing anything wrong. My, my, my. See, they're not hearing. They say they are, but they're not hearing. They're only hearing what they want to hear. I brought that out a couple weeks ago on this. They only hear what they want to hear. The real truth, the real food that's in these scriptures, they're not hearing that. Amen. We're going to move. I want to get up into Acts before we close this morning. Amen. In the book of Luke also, chapter uh, 6. Luke chapter 6. We're going to start in verse 1. We might read quite a few verses here, but then we'll go to the book of Acts. I want to get over there. Verse 1. It came to pass on the second Sabbath. Amen. The Sabbath. Now notice this. He's doing this on the Sabbath. After the first, that he went through the cornfields, and his disciples plucked the ears of corn, and did eat rubbing them in their hands. How many ever done that? You can take an ear of corn. I was young down in West Virginia. And you take a ear of corn, you get the end of it on, and you get it in your hands and start rubbing. Man, them things start coming on, falling up a whole lot easier than trying to do it uh, the other way. But anyhow, uh, the Bible said, and certain the Pharisees said uh, unto them, Why do ye uh, that which is not lawful to do on the Sabbath day? And Jesus answered and said, Have you not read <laughs> so much as this? Have you not read so much as this? You don't even know this. You pride yourself in knowing scriptures, he's telling them. You pride yourself in knowing what the word says, but you haven't read this? Well, apparently they had read it, but they never really heard it. Amen. And Jesus answered and said, Have you not read... <laughs> Have you not read so much of this as this? Uh, what David did when, it, uh, when himself was a hungered and uh, they which were with him, how that he went into the house of God and did take out of the uh, take and eat the showbread and gave also to them that were with him, which it is not lawful a man to eat, but for the priest only. But see, they didn't put so much on, on the Sabbath. Why wouldn't the Lord do that? Well, he's the Lord of the Sabbath. The Sabbath was made. You know, it wasn't made for man. It was made for him. Come on, church. I mean, for the men. But the, he said the scribes and Pharisees murmured against his disciples, saying, Why do you eat and drink with publicans and sinners? So now they're going to find something else. There's people always trying to find something else. And when you find people like that, you, you can pretty well say you have found somebody that's not been hearing, not been listening. Amen. So if you don't know these things, oh, you'll never catch it. That's why it's important, church. There's a lot more to know than Acts 2.38 in the Bible. Amen. Acts 2.38 is important. It's great. It's wonderful. We've got to know it. But there's a whole lot more in here than just Acts 2.38. That way you can put it all together. Amen. And the Bible says here too, I'm going to skip some of these. We just ain't got, we don't have time for all of it. But let's go to verse 7, though. So, and the scribes and the Pharisees watched him. Watched him. See, there are some people, listen now, there are some people sitting at church sometimes, they're not hearing, they're watching. <laughs> There's a big difference. How many knows what I'm talking about? Years and years ago, some of you older ones might know this. Years and years ago, there was a 
someone that was in our services, some in our services, they weren't hearing, they were just watching. And while they were watching me, you know what they were doing? Taking notes. Writing certain things I've said down. So that they could take that later and turn it around and use it against me. See, so not everybody's hearing. Some people are just watching to catch you. In some. That's why I said, church, there's a lot of modern-day Pharisees in the church today. They're there for the wrong reason. They're there watching. Amen. They're not he hearing. They're there to catch you in something. And you've got to watch these people. This all comes through hearing. Amen. Now let me read. Let me start here again here. But he knew their thoughts. But he knew their thoughts. How I many of you understand, church? Those nights that those certain individuals, they're not here no more, not in Park Stone, you don't even know them, but those that were doing that, uh, now listen to this. The Bible said that he knew their thoughts. Didn't they stop and think, the Lord's watching me. I'm, I'm watching a Church of Jesus Christ minister trying to catch him in something. You wonder, see, if they thought, which I know later they didn't, think that I was a Church of Jesus Christ preacher, at least in good standing, they even questioned whether I had the Holy Ghost. See, God saw their thoughts. They should have been hearing, but they were watching. And said to the men which had the, uh, the withered hand, Rise up and stand forth in the midst. And he rose and stood forward. Now here's a man with a withered hand on the Sabbath in a service with a man of God. Where's their minds? It's on to see if he's going to do anything on the Sabbath. They're not, not, they're not sitting there saying, my, my, I hope, pray, let's pray God heal him. Let's pray for the soul. Their mind wasn't even on the good things. Their mind's on this man with a withered hand. <laughs> Watching, is he going to heal him? Instead of saying, thank God, this is the Lord. Of course, they didn't recognize him. People today, I'm going to tell you something, church. A lot of people you think recognizes the Lord, they don't recognize the Lord. Now, if they did, they, they wouldn't be doing some of the things they're doing. Amen. Oh, Lord. He arose and stood forth. Then said Jesus unto him, I will ask one thing, one thing. Is it lawful on the Sabbath days to do good or to do evil? To save life or to destroy it? You know, they never could answer him. He could ask them questions. They just didn't know what to say. They were afraid to say anything. And looking around about upon them all, he said to the man, Stretch forth thy hand. Son's already getting the, they're already seeing this. They're already getting the, the, they're not saying, oh, thank God he's going to heal. No, they're, going to, they're all sitting there saying, he's going to heal. And hit on the Sabbath. See where their heart was? You see where their mind was? They're not hearing. They're watching. Too many people sitting around watching for something. What are you watching for, friend? You watching for me to do something wrong? You watching for me to uh, say something wrong? What are you watching Clarence for? What are you watching Sister uh, uh, Katie or Brother Mark? What are you watching him for? What is your purpose? You ought to be saying, God, heal them. God, bless them. God, use them. But some people don't think like that. They think like this. Now, I ask you this morning, with people that think like this, are they right with God? Come on now, don't be afraid. If You, you know, truth is truth. Stand for the truth. Are these people right with God? No. They are not right with God. Their mind is, is warped. How many of you ever seen somebody kind of walk away from some thinking, their mind's warped? You ever thought that? These people's minds warped. Here they are, man, everything, everything is right here. And here's a man with a withered hand. And here's the Lord and the disciples. God could heal him. But they're thinking it's the Sabbath. Oh, 
hard, hard to understand them. I ask you one thing. Is it lawful on the Sabbath days to do good or to do evil? See, he's about to do something good. It's amazing when, when God's about to do something good, there's some people thinking, calling it bad. Church, there's people like that. And looking around about uh, upon them, upon them all, he said to the man, Stretch forth thy hand. And he did so, and his hand was restored whole as the other. How can you possibly, if, if I had a withered hand, I mean, just not functioning at all, messed up, and, and, and God healed me on the Sabbath, and it became like the other one. How could you, how can you find fault in that? You know, how, you know do you know how you can find fault in that? Because your heart ain't right. That's right. You've got a hard heart. You haven't been listening. You haven't been hearing. Your heart's not right with God. Is it evil to do good on the Sabbath? Come on. People get so set in things, so used to doing things, uh, uh, you know, for so long. Things have got to be done that way. No, God's changing some things. God's trying to let them know. What did, what did he tell them there on the mountain? Hear him. What's he saying here? Hear me. Watch me. Listen to me. I don't care what them scribes and Pharisees telling you. That's, that's under the law. Listen to what I'm telling you. Listen to what I'm doing here in, in your sight. Amen. But now notice verse 11. And they were filled with madness. They got mad, church. For whatever reason, they got mad. They're, they, they were in madness. They just can't believe. God healed him on the Sabbath. No, all they can see is God did something on the Sabbath. That's all they can see. How much can you see tonight? Now, we're the church, but church, we need to ask ourselves these questions. How much can you see? How much do you believe in the church? How much can you trust the Lord? And I, I could say, too, how much do you trust in the church to do what's right? There's always somebody. Everywhere he went, there was somebody questioning him. It's the same today, it seems like. Even in the, everybody's always wanting to question you. Why don't you quit questioning, quit watching, and start hearing? God's trying to heal, and they're getting mad. I, I can't understand it. Well, I do, but, you know, just from the flesh. What is wrong with these people? Amen. Oh, Lord. Now, let's get back to this. We, we ain't got a whole lot of time left. And they were filled with madness. Now, listen. And communed with one another. What does that mean? Well, they got off in a little room. Started communing. That's an inside joke. Come on, saints. They were filled with madness and communed with one another. Amen. What they might do to Jesus. They're, they're actually talking, what are you going to do with him? Are we going to whoop him, beat him, kill him, run him out? What, what are we going to do with him? He done healed this person. They're not in there saying, oh, thank God the man is healed. Bless the Lord. No, they're upset. You know why, church? They're not hearing him. He's preaching every day. He's teaching every day, everywhere he goes. He's doing all sorts of miracles and healings. 
but they're not hearing or seeing a thing. Their minds are blinded. They're back to what we've said about the, 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 the scales on their eyes. They can't see nothing. Their flesh is leading them. You've got to get out of the flesh and into the spirit because God's seeking them that will worship him in spirit and in truth. Not flesh and truth. My God, see what they might do with Jesus. I'd be afraid to even get together with somebody we're trying to figure out what we're going to do with him. I would have been trying to figure out what he could do for them, not what they could do to him. I tell you, things like that upset me. <laughs> My, how far can people get? How, 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 how dense? How blind? Lord, Lord. We're dead again. And they were filled with madness. I'm, I'm trying to stress that. I'm trying to get you to, to think on that. If we come in here one day, amen, and we're, we're coming in here and we're going to, uh, I don't know, just in the honor somebody or recognize their, I don't know, what anything. But we all get in here and, and we're going to celebrate this or we're going to celebrate that. And all of a sudden, the Spirit of the Lord moves among us. Amen? And God just miraculously healed Clarence or one of you of something you've been praying about. And everybody got excited and was praising the Lord. And this celebration got off, it's off the list now. Wouldn't you think it'd be uh, terrible if somebody said, no, wait a minute, wait a minute. We're here, we're here to celebrate Clarence. I'd say, you, <laughs> there's something wrong with you. Clarence, can, we could celebrate Clarence next week. <laughs> God's trying to move. Church, basically, that's, a, that's what's going on here. Things are not going the way they thought that it was going to go. And they're in there watching him. Ain't nobody, you're not watching me, are you? I'll put you on the spot. Don't raise your hand. I'm going to tell you something. You are. You better get your eyes on something else. You might want to turn your eyes on yourself. Lord, what is wrong with me? Amen. Filled with madness and commune with one another. Amen. What they might do to Jesus. Anybody here want to do anything harmful to Jesus? Now, there's nothing wrong with saying Jesus in this context. We know who Jesus is. I, I told a man one time, I said, Jesus mentioned a lot of times. Lord Jesus mentioned a lot of times. But I said, every time they would have done the thing in, the, in the word or in deed, they done it in his name, which was Jesus Christ. So they're, they're trying to figure out what they can do to Jesus. Anybody here, anybody here have any ill feelings toward the Lord? How many of you would think, or how many of you believe that these people had some ill feelings toward the Lord? Huh? Say amen. amen. If you do, if you don't, don't say it. So now here's these people having hard feelings toward Jesus Christ. But yet we find out who these people are. They're his own people. They're the Jews. The scribe, these are teachers of the law. So if, it's, if, if it can happen 2,000 years ago with the Pharisees and the Sadducees and the scribes and, 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 and those that teach the law, the priests, then it can happen today with the ministry. There's ministers that they, they just don't like this. It, it might be, I'm, I, I'm just exaggerating, but it wouldn't surprise me if the Lord was here today, somebody tried to crucify him again. That wouldn't surprise me. And probably some church-going people. Because I'll tell you one thing, if he was here, he preached the truth to them. You think Paul was rough? Jesus Christ looked right at him and said, you hypocrites, vipers, 
Child, you're the child of the devil. Jesus Christ told them that. No wonder they're hollering, crucify him. Oh, Lord. Let's move on before we run out of time. Verse 12. And it came to pass in those days that, that he went out into a mountain to pray and continued all night in prayer to God. Now here he is. Oh, he never get done. He's done healed this man on the Sabbath. Had a withered hand. The man, thank God, is healed. Amen. He goes off to himself to a mountain to pray. Where's these people? Irritated. Come on, saints. Might have been done them good if they went off somewhere and said pray and prayed and said, Lord, let us understand this. No, they just, what can we do with him? That's how bad people can get in this world. And when it was day, he called unto him his disciples. Now listen to this. And of them, of them, he chose twelve. This is where he, right after this incident, is when he chose the twelve apostles. <coughs> twelve disciples. Amen. And of them he chose twelve, whom also he named apostles. Simon, who, who he also named Peter, and Andrew his brother, James, and John, Philip, and Bartholomew, Matthew, Thomas, James, the son of Alphaeus, and Simon, called Zelotus, amen, and uh, it says, in, and Judas, the brother of James, and Judas Iscariot, which was the betrayer. Now, what would you bring all that? Well, listen, just, just <laughs> listen to this. Look into this. Now, after this, he picked these twelve to be his disciples and names them and right there at the end Judas Iscariot now Judas has been with them has he not church hasn't Judas been with them and Judas the brother of James and Judas Iscariot which also was the traitor What are you getting from that before I say anything else? Everywhere he goes, he's got a traitor. He even chose this one because he had a purpose for it. God's always got traitors. <laughs> before he did this, look at all of them that was there. That was against him. That was trying to find what they could do to him. I call that a traitor. Others one time, and later on we find where he was teaching and preaching things kind of hard and some of them went back and walked no more with him. But to me, that's a traitor. How many of you know what they do to traitors in, uh, in the middle of a war? Huh? Well, yeah, they used to hang them out or shoot them. <laughs> yeah. I don't want to be a traitor. I want to be a follower. So here's Judas Iscariot. One that betrayed him. Brought him right in. Among the other eleven. Of course we all know why I taught on that too long ago. Amen. But let's finish. We find here church that. Uh, verse 17. And he came down with them and stood in the plain and the company of his disciples and a great multitude of people out of all Judea and Jerusalem and from the uh, sea coast of Tyre and Sidon, which came, what? To hear him. And what? And to be healed of their diseases. See, you see the contrast between this group and this group? Here's a group that's not hearing. They don't hear a thing he teaches. All they got on their mind is the law. Here's another group that's hearing all the things he's saying and doing, and they come there to hear him and to be healed. 
So when we look at the church today, we see more doing this than they are doing that, we can come to a pretty good conclusion, church. There are a whole lot less people hearing today than they are hearing. Amen. I wonder sometimes when I wonder sometimes with these churches, what is their goal? If you're not going to obey God, if you're not going to try to find out what He wants, what do you expect to get in the end? Do you ever stop thinking about it? They're not going to get anything to the Lord. So the only thing I can come up with are they want numbers, recognition, money, fame. They're looking for something, but it cannot be God. You can't look for God and deny God at the same time. You hear me? And what I, what I mean by name is getting up and teaching things outside the, the Bible. The Word of God. All right. Book of Acts. Let's go to Acts. I'm skipping some in John, but that's all right. We'll, we can't bring them all. I told you before I had pages of scriptures concerning hearing. <laughs> People today just ain't hearing. They hear what they want to hear. Amen. Acts 2, reading down, certain 1, which I could have finished this this morning. And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all of one accord in one place, and suddenly there came a sound from heaven as a rushing mighty wind, filled all the house where they were sitting. And there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as a fire, and it sat upon each of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost, and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit of God gave them utterance. And there were, listen now, and there were dwelling at Jerusalem Jews, devout men, out of every nation under heaven. Pay attention. Every nation under heaven were there. I'm just trying to prove a point here. You've got to hear. So God made it possible, and this is all in his plans, that they will hear. Because way back there when he scattered them in all these nations and and all that, and they all had a different language. Church, you know, there's so many languages out there, and I'm not talking about natural languages. I'm talking about gospels. They're, they're bringing that gospel in so many different ways, and it, it's unbelievable. But now listen. Devout men are out of every nation. And now when they heard, or when this was noise abroad, the multitude came together and were confounded because that every man heard them speaking his only I touched on this a couple weeks ago and they were all amazed and marveled saying one to another behold how I'm sorry behold uh, are not all these which speak Galileans how hear we every man in our own tongue wherein we were born isn't that something how hear we every one I'm sorry every man in our own tongue wherein we were born how? Because God miraculously, when those tongues fell and parted asunder, moved upon them. And, and the Bible tells us, too, and we'll find if we get time, that when they were speaking, what they were speaking was truth. What they were speaking was the Word. And they were magnifying, glorifying God. He wanted them, people, to hear the truth. Praise the Lord, church. I'm not going to try to name all of these. I thought at first I was thinking 11. I don't know why I had 11 in my mind. But actually, I got about 19. 19. That's at least listed. 19 different languages. Out of the same group of men, all Galilean. That was God. Why? Because God seen that it was important, church. The point I'm trying to make here. God seeing the importance, no matter how many people were there that day, no matter what country they were from, they've got to hear the word. So it's a lot easier, I would think, for God to have just uh, give them the tongues apart. Amen. And all speaking a different language so that all of them could hear it and they have different have 19 or more different preachers trying to preach to them. See, God knows what he's doing. But again, we have to be willing to hear. 
what God is saying. I wanted to get on over here. We might get back on this again. I don't know yet. But if you go on over into to, well, there's some more here in Acts. But if you go on especially to the book of Revelation, the Bible speaks a lot about, I'll just read a couple real fast. <clears throat> Starting there in Revelation 1 and 3, Blessed is he that readeth and he that heareth the words of this prophecy. And keep those things which are written therein, for the time is at hand. Blessed are they that hear. How many wants to be blessed? 2 7, Revelation 2 and 7, He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. See, God, I want to spend some time with that. Maybe we will later. What the Spirit says unto the churches. Now, the, he said the Spirit, not Google. Not a CD you picked up at the Bible bookstore. Come on, saints. If this offends you, I'm sorry. It'll just have to offend you. Go home, pray about it, and get over it. Blessed is he that readeth, and they that hear the words of this prophecy. Amen. And keep those things which are written therein for the time is at hand. He that has ears to hear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. To him that overcometh will I give to eat of the tree of life. How many wants to how many of you believe there's a tree of life in heaven? Now the Bible tells us to the place there is a tree of life. There is a tree of life in the garden. That's why the Bible tells us that God had to put them out of the garden lest they eat of the tree of life and live forever. And he couldn't let them do that because they had sinned. There's a tree of life in heaven. However God chooses it to be. Now I ask again, how many would like to at least see it and eat of it? Huh? Well, friend, you better hear the word of God and you better listen to the word of God and you better get right, be saved, or you'll never see it. Amen. My, my, my. 2 and 11, he that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. He that overcometh shall not be hurt of the second death. We won't get into the second death. Friend, you don't want to be there. <laughs> you hear me? You, you want to make that first resurrection. Well, you better hear. 2 and 17, he that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. To him that overcome will I give to eat of the hidden manna. How many wants to eat of the hidden manna God has for us? Well, you're going to have to hear. You want to eat of that tree? you got to hear. Come on, say. Uh, who, you want to overcome? you got to hear. <laughs> Amen. And I will give him a white stone. God said, I'm going to give him a white stone. I'm, you know, everybody has their own opinion, but... It doesn't matter what this white stone is or what form it takes or anything else. How many would like to have this white stone? I do. You're never going to get it unless you're one of them that hears the Word of God. And in the stone a new name written, which no man knoweth, saith he that receiveth. I want that. I said, I want that. 2.29, he that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. 3.6, he that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. 3.13, he that hath an ear, let him hear, amen, what the Spirit saith unto the churches. Revelation 3.20, behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man hear, amen, my voice and open the door, I will come into him and will sup with him, amen, and he with me. Last one, Revelation 3.22. He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. I think we've got more than two or three here. I, we've heard enough to understand that God wants you and I to hear His Word. Not Google's, not some other man, not some uninspired book. He wants to hear the Word. That's the only way, church, you're going to grow in God. If you're reading other things, uh, Trying to get you to God, you might want to watch that, I'm telling you. So it might sound good, might have a good good thought. But you better do you better watch. It might feed you something poison. Remember what Bishop Lee used to say? Rat poison's good, put it out, it'll kill them. 
You know what kills them? Into 90% of it, I think it was 99 or 9, 90 or 99, one, is good old corn. That 1% is what kills the rat. Now you can read what you want to read, hear what you want to hear, do what you want to do. But you better make sure it's all of the Word of God and not some man's idea or opinion or some former leader that you sit under. Amen. He may have given you something you want to, you don't need to hear. That's right. Well, maybe don't go ahead and get the kids, brother. I'm sorry. It's time for them to come up. Let's look, let's look at this one while he's, we're getting ready. 320. Revelation 320. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man will hear my voice, I stand at the door and knock. How many people, how many people is God knocking on their door? But they will not hear. He said, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. Amen. If any man hear my voice and open the door, I'm going to bring that out. Notice it said that, and open the door. You and I have to open this door. God will come to the door. God will knock on the door. You and I have to open that door. Say, come in. Amen. You know, there's a lot of people, church, they're not even going to the door. They're not answering it. No doubt a lot of them going one day going to be saying, Lord, why didn't you knock on my door? I knocked on your door so many times and you never heard it. I've talked to you. I've dealt with you. I've done this. I've done that. I heard the word. I, you heard the word preached. You know, you're never going to be able, nobody's going to ever stand before God and say, I didn't know. I didn't hear. You didn't give me a chance. God gave you a chance. He's given me a chance. We better take it. Amen. Amen, church. Now, I look at Sister Katie. I don't think she'd mind me saying this. <laughs> if she does, if she does mind, uh, I'll forgive her. You know, God gave that young woman a, uh, he gave her a chance. But she needed a chance. I'm glad she took it. Aren't you, sis? No telling where you'd be if you undertook it. God was knocking. Sister Katie says, yeah, yes, Lord. Finally, she says, yes, Lord. I'm not running her down. I'm, I'm uh, bringing her. A lot of people don't do that. They just keep on running. And look where poor old Mark would be if she'd keep on running. Where old Luke would be if she'd keep on running. Come on, church. Might sound funny, but there's a lot of truth in it. You never know if you'll listen to the Lord what God can do for you. If you'll just obey God. You never know what God can give you. Some people just don't listen. I'm going to do it my way, preacher. Well, you go ahead. I ask you one question. What has your way done for you yet? <laughs> what has your way, where has it gotten you? So why would you continue in your way when it's got you in this mess? Common sense would say, I think I'm going to do something different. Amen.